Halloween is here and we all love to see some scary shit. We're going to take a look at some of the new stinking scary movies that you should absolutely check out if you want to have a good laugh. First up in the list is Grim Cuddy. I'm not sure if these streaming services are run by actual people anymore. The story feels like it was generated by an AI. Let me tell you the story of Grim Cuddy in just one sentence. Grim Cuddy is an internet meme that chases around kids word to kill them because their parents worry about them. Is that confusing? Well, because it is. Even saying it out loud makes me want to laugh. Grim Cuddy only appears to kids. When their parents get worried about them, then it goes cuddy cuddy, nutty nutty. Kids have to make their parents calm down or literally kill them to stop Grim Cuddy. The monster itself looks like the grudge girl who ended up taking a lot of protein powder. It's a mixture of a Slenderman, Momo, and some creatine. And then, and only then, that's some creatine. They blast your screen with Mr. Cuddy, so there's no suspense whatsoever. Not hidden in the dark, nothing. When it lurks, it's like some hulking football player. It caught me off guard every time it appeared, and I just would start laughing. Surprise, motherfucker. Hard eyes, motherfucker. Some fries, motherfucker. Disguise, motherfucker. None of the parents in the town believe their kids and think they're just straight up mentally ill. So they take their phones and laptops away. The dad is actually the scariest thing in this movie. He should be the one stalking everyone. Nothing is worse than a controlling parent, and this guy plays him all too well. That's the message of the movie, but holy shit who gave this movie a green light. There's this ridiculous scene where the mother starts babbling to her daughter. Grim Cuddy appears, and I'm not sure how she manages to break the car's window with bare hands. And hardly anything happening to her. Super mom indeed. Despite the fact that for the whole movie, she thinks her daughter is a psycho, accepts that she's telling the truth about this woman that holds her son in a closet. Apparently this mom keeps her son a prisoner in the closet. The son tried to kill her to get rid of the Grim Cuddy bullshit, but sadly failed to do so. Every movie has to end somewhere, so this is how they decided to do it. A sudden eureka moment for the super mom to change sides and believe her daughter. The ending is truly something to remember for the rest of your life. Mr. Buffy is chasing the girl, so she just goes ahead and stabs the father. At this moment, I just appreciated the lore that this movie would finally end, but no. It's nothing but a scratch for the all-knowing daddy. Then there is this moment where Mr. Grim Cuddy grabs the kid's throat and the father realizes that his daughter was telling the truth the whole time. Injects himself with some sort of a relaxing shot and then, hallelujah. Grim Cuddy is a projection of crazy parents who are overprotective and don't listen to kids. It's good, right? Right, guys? It's an atrocious pile of steaming dog shit. I have a sincere question though, how did this movie happen? A. The writers are held captive in the Hulu basement and this is a cry for help. B. This is a way to make some quick cash by deceiving the producers. Or C. Bruh. Let me know your answers down in the comments. Hold on you guys, let me just quickly thank the director of the movie. This is apparently his Twitter, so let's share our opinion real quick. The sheer creativity of Grim Cuddy left me speechless. I am a changed man now thanks to this piece of art. Thank you sir. Looking forward to more horror films directed by you. My overall rating is garbage on fire out of 10. Looking forward to more from this director. <laughs> now here comes Halloween Ends. The best part of the movie is probably the start. This guy named Corey, which is the star of the show, kills this kid by slamming the door in his face. The kid falls down and gets splattered on the ground. You get some good laughs? Well, this is your chance to just close the movie and roll the credits. Because holy shit, it gets boring. Remember this character called Michael Myers, who is the guy we come to see the movie for? The guy that goes around killing people on Halloween? Well, we got Corey, everybody. Buddy. Good old Corey. So forget about Michael and come to this ride with us that nobody gives a fuck about. Corey is the bad boy in town now, so everyone bullies him. This one night, a bunch of travelers from the 1970s come across Corey and start bullying him and throw him over the bridge.
bridge. Then Michael finally shows up at the 40 minutes mark and pulls him into the sewers for some reason. Our psycho killer Michael sees into his soul like Ghost Rider with his penance stare and lets him go away. Our new killer is born. Hooray! So Michael takes Corey in as his intern and they team up for a while until Corey decides he wants to be the alpha. He steals his mask and takes over to be the main killer. So this Allison girl, granddaughter of Lori, falls in love at first sight with Corey like she hasn't seen any other boy in town. Just take a look at this scene. It's creepy as fuck. Everyone apparently flirts with her, the local cop, the doctor, and other people don't respect her. You're fucking him, aren't you? It's like the perfect story of Haddonfield in a way. You're fucking him, aren't you? Ha 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 ha. But damn, look at those muscles. She works out. I can let that slide. I respect that. Allison doesn't lack anything to be a part of the psycho club as well. He literally tells her that he killed a person, but she doesn't give a fuck and goes on a date with him. It's like our psycho lovebirds were meant to be with each other. Corey's mother is the most bizarre character. She slaps Corey because his new girlfriend is trying to take him away or some shit like that? What the hell is this? Who came up with this script? It's like there are a bunch of NPCs speaking some random text. Hey! What you smiling about? What did you buy at the store? It really makes you question which choices in your life led you to this moment. Just think about it. This is the 13th movie of a franchise that started 44 years ago. Michael Myers now has descended to a side character and we have Corey. Good old Corey. This movie could give you a seizure from how boring it is, so be advised. The ending however shows us a glimmer of hope that Michael Myers is finally dead. The town folk grinds his body with this shredding machine. So hopefully no more movies in this franchise. My overall rating is dog shit on fire out of 10. Next up we got Terrifier 2. If you're looking for straight up gore, then this movie is actually worth watching. But if you like your blood with a little sprinkle of some story, then this would be more of a comedy than a horror movie. The story is about art, the killer clown. That's it. That's the whole story. I mean, they want to add more, but that just doesn't work. Our main character, Sienna, allegedly is the star of the show. Apparently, his father predicted the rise of this clown, but God knows how. So left this machete for his daughter so that she could kill the clown when the time comes. Nothing on how the hell he knew all this, but hey, we don't really care either. This movie is incredibly long for a slasher movie, more than 2 hours and 10 minutes. Some of the scenes are drawn out just for the hell of it. Many scenes could have either been trimmed down or completely cut out. I'll give you a taste of what I mean. There is this scene where one of Sienna's friends, Allie, gets obliterated by the terrifier. So here it goes. The clown breaks in and smiles at Allie as in, Yeah girl, we're gonna have a good time. The girl is like, No we're not. And it starts running. The clown catches up and cuts her face through her eye. That's just the beginning though. Then he starts scalping her head and blood starts gushing out. At this moment I was like, okay, she's going to pass out because of the pain, right? No. He starts skinning her back as she's still screaming with full power and also breaks her arm like it's jello and completely detaches it with a perfect cut. Only with bare hands by the way. Now surely she's going to pass out. How much pain can you endure before you pass out? No, the answer is no. He keeps going and breaks her other hand in half like it's cracking nuts. At this point I was laughing so hard that I had to pause the movie. It's like Happy Tree Friends the live action. The clown does a few more cuts to complete his handicraft and then leaves. Is it time? Is she dead? Nope. Miraculously with all the blood gone, a broken arm, and torn apart skin, she starts crawling toward her phone. Is this a glimmer of hope for her? Just kidding! Mr. Terrifier comes back with early Christmas presents and it starts pouring bleach and salt on her. Then rubs some salt into her gaping wounds, thinking, alright, almost complete, and then rips her face off. She is finally dead. Her mother comes back home, sees the broken glasses, and rushes to the bedroom to see the clown finishing his handicraft with a few more touches, slicing up pieces of meat. And then psych, she is still alive, baby. The mother's acting in this scene is truly remarkable. At 
this point, my stomach hurts from all the laughter. The main girl's acting is fine and all, but the script is not. In the end, she turns into Wonder Woman. After she drowns, gets resurrected because the machete was magical or some shit. I don't know what to say, but finally she manages to decapitate the clown and the movie tells us who to not mess with. The after credit scene is also hilarious. This girl from the first movie now is locked up in an asylum, and guess what? Shets out the clown's head. Well, I know I want some more sequels, so no complaints here. Throughout this movie, you feel like you're in crack. I mean that as a compliment, though. My overall rating is chopped off arm out of 10. Happy Halloween, guys. Well, that's just about it. This was Radical Hedgy. Until next time. And also, guys, while I was editing the video, um, the Grim Cuddy director just liked my reply and is also following me at the moment. So I, I, I only have one follower, and it's the Grim Cuddy director. I, I don't know what to say, man.